Greetings, everybody. Welcome to another episode of One Degree of Scandalous with Cato Kalin. I love Cato. Is he here? He's here, right over here. <laughs> I'm Tom Zenner. Thanks very much for, uh, for joining us. Episode number 14. Jesus. Wow, wow. we're three months old. It's been, uh, it's been a blur this summer. It's been a lot of fun. Hey, uh, make sure you download and subscribe if you haven't done that. Might write us a little review on Apple. Spotify, wherever you get your I, Tom, podcast. Tom always gives me updates there because I'm not the stats guy. I'm just creative of how we're doing and everything looks like it's pointing up. Better than the stock market. Yeah, doing well. So thanks everybody for the support. YouTube, make sure you follow us there as well. Um, subscribe to our channel and, and give us a review. So thanks everybody. We're looking forward to another great show, another Hollywood scandal show that's going to have you... Uh, really enthralled for the next 45 minutes or oh, so yeah you talk about you talk about that stuff that's going to be enthralling you sent me so much so many clips so many emails on our next guest i swear it was a reading a novel no, right? i said how much more it's can like getting I a screenplay it was like this guy has done everything yeah. e everything yeah. Yeah. covered every celeb yeah. and our show this is beyond star study it's it's sort of like the academy awards of scandal today and it really is it's it is like, it's like a wikipedia page of all the scandal we'll get yeah. to that in one second speaking of scandal how how was your week any scandal speaking of scandals <laughs> caused my week you know i was telling you i was going to go head up to vegas to, this week and one of our guests was ryan wolf it's going to pop in and surprise him but i decided maybe gambling's not a good t thing for me to do right now because uh, I, I i play a lot of poker yeah so i'm going to wait for the little hot streak coming up and oh, okay. I don't feel it. I, I believe in the, the stars aligning and is it my turn and I can kind of turn the positive. I'm not feeling it. It could change tomorrow. Well, you right know what? You got to follow your instincts on that. So can I read between the lines and maybe there's a, a couple of rough Saturday nights? <laughs> Probably. Okay. All Probably. right. But you know what? Luck always turns. Yeah. And sometimes uh, Lady Luck is on your side in Vegas. So you never know. And we got our boy, Ryan Wolf, the, the, the pastor who married Jen and Ben. By the way, what a Thank fiasco you. that that wedding was in Georgia over the weekend. Good Lord. Could you be a little bit more over the top? Yeah. I, I, getting married twice now. This is amazing. Yeah. They did in Vegas. Then they decided to have a real wedding in Georgia. I think it's amazing. And was it her, his mom broke her ankle? I guess, yeah. The ambulance had to come out there twice. Um, boy, is there anything that J-Lo does that is low-key? No. I, I mean, not. could you... Um, I saw her perform at American Idol one time. And she was just the, the musical guest, right? This wasn't a concert. This wasn't a stadium tour. This wasn't the Oscars. This was American Idol taping on a... Wednesday night or whenever it was. Yeah. She had 20 people following her. Hair, makeup, publicist, list. you know. 20! 20 people, Cato. It was unbelievable. List of demands. It's yeah. amazing. Even Gandhi's list of demands. You know what? He just said, chilled glass of urine. He's very simple. 800 nylon thread count sheets. No That's special M&Ms? Nothing was, like that for him? No, and that was... <laughs> Green for room? No, for for uh, Gandhi, that was it. Just that was it. He's very simple, you know that, and and uh, don't go to his restaurant. There's no food. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, before we get to our guest, you, okay. So you and I were chatting before the show, and you were talking because you do so many celebrity tournaments, golf tournaments, yeah. events all over the country. You mentioned that you do work at Bill Murray's events, right? I don't work. I, yeah, I got invited to yeah. Bill, Bill's events in St. Augustine, Florida, which is if you know golf, that's the Golf Hall of Fame. Yeah. Uh, one of the most fun tournaments ever. Okay, and so it's, it's you, amazing. I'll tell you a little scandalous story, oh. right? Okay, so people, I've been you know, in the media my whole life, so I've interviewed a lot of celebrities, been around a lot of famous athletes and, and famous people, and people always go, who's the biggest jerk you've ever been around, right? They wanna know who's the coolest athlete you've ever been around or interviewed, and that one's pretty easy. It's Michael Jordan, it's Kobe, yeah. it was Steve Kerr when he was a player, it's Larry Fitzgerald, it's those types of guys. But there is no hesitation when someone says to me, who's the biggest jerk that I've ever had to deal with? And it was Bill Murray. I was, I, I, I don't know. I, he's uh, and I'll at tell the tournament. You, he keeps to himself. Yeah, I would but imagine. He's fun, but he's but everybody thinks it's you know the Caddyshack guy or the Stripes guy. I mean, he was such a jerk to me. Uh, Want to hear the story? Yeah. So this was course. probably 1996, and I was in New York um, with the Bulls because they were playing the Knicks on a Sunday night. It was a big game. I think the Knicks coach had just been fired, so Van Gundy, Jeff Van Gundy, had just become the coach. And he's a Chicago guy. Uh, well, the Murray family. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So he was there, and we did a show with Dennis Rodman every Sunday night during sweeps for our TV station in Chicago, for NBC. So I was there and the time was really tight. I had to get the interviews I had to get with the players mm -hmm. and then get Rodman set up, which is always an adventure, always. I mean, one time he wore a nurse's outfit. One time he came with his hands handcuffed to himself. I remember that night he had a court jester hat on for some reason. And you can imagine him in New York at that time. So I'm outside the Bulls locker room and there was a lot of people out there. And then Bill Murray was right there. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, let me ask Bill Murray if he'll, we're gonna tape. We're gonna tape this thing with Robin. Maybe he'll come out and do this, right? I asked him nicely, I go, hey, Bill, I introduced myself. I said, hey, I'm Tom, uh, NBC5 in Chicago, because I knew he was from Chicago. Hey, would you mind 
coming out and we could uh, maybe have you, you know, hang with Dennis and do a little quick little segment. And he started mocking me. He started just repeating, oh, my name is Tom. Oh, you're Tom. Oh, you're from it. He just kept repeating. And I, I basically just said, screw you. And I went into the locker room and got there. But to this day, wow. 26 years later, I just remember what a jerk he you was. You still feel it inside and, you. But, you know, isn't that kind funny, of... the impression? Like, you've made everybody's day. Everybody that's met you the last 30 years loves you. You know, you bring joy. You bring happiness, a, a great energy. But the, the opposite side, people don't forget. It's like a, a restaurant if you get a bad experience mm -hmm. and you tell a couple people. But I'll never forget that. Bill Murray could not have been a bigger jerk. So that day. I read your Yelp review on Bill. So I, I, I kind of knew that. <laughs> Did you? Well, still take the gigs. Okay. Still take them if you could get them. All right. What do you say? We dive into some deep, just, deep Hollywood scandal. Bill, that was Tom's story. Please invite me to the tournament again. <laughs> that was just Tom. Darby. Hey, man. I think you're great. I'm sure I'm not the only person with that story. Um, all right. You ready? Get the headphones I am. on. I'm going to get the headphones on. Brace yourself, there everybody. Goes my hair. If you're watching on YouTube. There goes my hair. If you're listening on Apple, Spotify, Podcast One right now, let's have some fun. Let's bring in our guest. From Destinations Unknown, we're going to keep it on the down low. Yeah. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome the number one Hollywood fixer that there is. His name is oh. Paul Baresi. Paul, thanks so much for joining Cato and I on One Degree of Scandalous. How are you doing today? Great to be here. What a wonderful testimonial. Uh, the number one Hollywood fixer. Well, yeah. can we go with that? Yeah, let, I, let, let's I, let's I, start. Look at, with, those, look at those guns. I mean, man. look I at mean, it. What do you got? I, Joe Rogan I, arms. Yeah. You got Joe it's Rogan arms? Right. I want to follow up with your Bill Murray. You do? I, I ran into him in Westwood in an elevator, and I wasn't in that elevator two seconds, and I knew he was a prick. So <laughs> is that I, true, Paul? I mean, did you sense that too? Same experience? I, I mean, no. Wait, wait, why? Why do you say that? There was a way about him. The look on his face, his demeanor. I said hello. He was like, like, who the hell are you? You know, uh, what are you saying hello to me for? Right. But he was a jerk. Once he, again, Bill, that's <laughs> Paul talking. Please don't invite me to the He could have just told me, no, I can't do the interview. Me, Bill, talking to you, you're a jerk. <laughs> My old boss, Anthony Pelicano, the real uh, quintessential fixer, who mm -hmm. did 17 years in federal prison, he, uh, he and I used to get together and do a list of all the people in Hollywood who needed a good ass kicking. Well, he would be on the top of the list. <laughs> uh, I was speaking ass kicking. Show everybody those guns there. Uh, you, you, I was like, it's, Joe Rogan's got nothing on you. <laughs> no, Joe Rogan, uh, you know, I'm 74. You could be my well, son. I'll, I'll tell you what, that's yeah. an inspiration, though, Paul, I looking got at one you. Better. I haven't worked out in a year. Well, okay, but Cato, let me just say this. This is an inspiration. You're 74 years old. I, I you look phenomenal. Uh, having an appearance like that has to help as a Hollywood fixer. But let's tell everybody what a Hollywood fixer is. And, yeah. and I'll do my best to explain it. And then, Paul, I'll let you take it from there. But the, the layman's terms are, in Hollywood, you can imagine the stuff that goes on behind the scenes here. We're talking about people that have access to anything they want at any time. And a lot of them live delusional lifestyles. Right. And you get in trouble from some of those actions. Sexually, primarily, and that's where Paul will step in. Paul's had relationships with two of the top entertainment lawyers in L.A., uh, Marty Singer and Burt Fields, worked for both of them, and then you get the reputation of being the guy that can fix yeah. problems, make problems go away for the biggest names in show business. Well, those two people you mentioned, Burt Fields and uh, Marty Singer, probably are the top. They had the A-list of A-list yep. clients. Yep. And Paul, and, and that's about right. So why don't you tell us how you entered the picture? No one, you know, growing up in Boston, you know, going to Catholic school in Boston when you grew up, you probably weren't saying to your Catholic nun teachers, I want to be a <laughs> Hollywood fixer when I grow up. So how did this all happen? Cato will agree because he went to parochial school that it, it groomed me to be a fixer. <laughs> but you're absolutely right. The, the sexually based scandal is the worst character assassination for any celebrity, that's the one they're, they're most sensitive to because they have an image to uphold. But I assure you, most of them, what you see on screen is nothing, not even remotely close to how they are behind closed doors. And that's where I come in. Yeah, they, they, they have an image to keep up for the fans and what sells tickets and then they have their private life. And I do all studios have a fixer? All studio heads know. look for a fixer? You know, I, I'm not... I would think they have a cleanup guy. Yeah, they probably do. But a last resort guy. I'm the last resort guy. They try every other means to make the problem disappear. And after they've exhausted everything, 
they'll call on me. Well, you know, uh, Paul, you mentioned make things disappear. What did you make disappear with what celebrity? Uh, now, I, I think that in the news right now, we've got uh, Amber Heard, there's Johnny Depp. Sure. And uh, of course, I remember the scandal with Eddie Murphy, an A-list star. Uh, what did you help make disappear and how did you make it disappear? Yeah, like well, probably your start, you, right? Your you first one. Go back to the beginning. Uh, the first case I ever worked was a 1993 Michael Jackson oh, this, yeah. molestation case. Everyone came out of the woodwork alleging that they had witnessed Michael Jackson with underage uh, boys. And uh, there was a couple, a French couple who worked for him in 1991 named Stella and Philippe Lamarck. So it happens I used to date Stella. <laughs> and one evening they knocked on my door and they said, we've got a story we heard, uh, we witnessed uh, Michael Jackson uh, fondling Macaulay Culkin. Can you help us uh, broker the story with the National Enquirer? Because I had connections with the National Enquirer, a friend of mine, Jerry George. I said, yeah, what's in it for me? And they offered me 10%. They wanted 100 grand. Well, long story short, I got them the 100 grand, but then in the interim, when I went back and said, you got the money, they said, oh, we hired a lawyer, Arnold Kessler, who said he can get us a half a million. See you later, Paul. We don't need you. I said, well, you got to give me a kill fee or something. So they let me tag along. And when they gave the story to the lawyer, uh, they embellished upon it. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, I see. The more salacious and lurid the story, the bigger the bucks. Yep. And that's precisely what they were doing. So I knew Pelicano, Tony Pelicano, who would become my boss, uh, was representing Michael Jackson at the time. I brought him this information mm -hmm. uh, for purposes of discrediting the, discrediting the French couple. And uh, that's how it all oh, began. Okay, so it basically began because this French couple was trying to screw you, right? They, 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 they offered you this gig, and then you were there performing the services that they wanted to. And when they kind of backstabbed you, that's when you flipped and then you protected Michael in this whole process, right? Right. I've never been, the, I've never been the one to draw first blood. Now it was reported in Vanity Fair. Oh, this guy, Baresi screwed the Lamarcks, but no Vanity Fair, uh, Maureen, uh, Orth. Orth, I believe her name was, she got it all wrong. And, uh, I said, look, they're the ones who screwed me. Right. And uh, so that's why I decided. Did, did they? I would go with did they know? Did they know that you uh, turned your back on them, or were you playing both no, sides? I, I made them think I was still. Still, that's up. what I want to know. Okay, you played it smart. And then at the right moment, thrust <laughs> home. <laughs> so did that begin your relationship with Pelicano? And then when he that's had future, what began my relationship with Pelicano. He saw this innate ability in me to be able to deal with people. The idea of uh, Louisville Slugger and Ray Donovan and beating the crap out of people and breaking legs and the power of words and persuasion. And like you said, being able to capture someone's special attention at the right moment is really the most effective tool. And that was my uh, that was my thing. You know, I had the ability to speak well and I uh, had a way about me that made people want to just listen sure leave it power yeah. of words that's my effective tool you know in your role well you got to have finesse i mean you can't just come in there with a steam steam shovel and you know a sledgehammer and that doesn't get the job done do you is is it a thankless job because the cele do the celebrities thank you you know what it is now let's fast forward to today okay all along i mean i started working i was hired by amber heard in uh the summer of uh 2019, July 2019, to investigate her ex-husband to look into his follies and vices. That would be Johnny bad. Depp. See if I could find instances of bad conduct in accordance with what she alleged. To get ready for the trial so, that she knew was happening? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. So at that point, 2019, to put every, so we know 2019, so people know that's, they're already legally divorced, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, but she wanted the dirt on Johnny, and it's the first time I actually ever went out to get the dirt on another celebrity for another for one celebrity to get the dirt on the other celebrity. So, of course, uh, I felt that I was up for the charge, and I interviewed over 100 
people. I have more than uh, 500 pages of uh, notes and correspondence back and forth to lawyers. I couldn't find one person that had one deprecating thing to say about Johnny. So I went back to Amber and I said, hey, everybody loves the guy. He can do no wrong. And then, of course, there were people who didn't want to talk to me um, because they didn't want to bring scandal upon themselves or they didn't want to screw themselves out of work for whatever the reason. Mm -hmm. So uh, she fired us. She, When I say us, she fired me and the attorneys who brought me in, huh. uh, Eric George and uh, Rick Schwartz. So two two things with that story. First of all, were you paid up front with her? And secondly, were you called as a witness? And you could have been a witness for Johnny in the trial. Yeah, that's were a you common question. I got my money. It's my understanding the attorneys are still waiting uh, for their money. But but let me explain what happened. While I was invited, uh, while I was uh, investigating Johnny, I found interesting things about him. Uh, documents, found out a lot about his upbringing and so on and so forth that made for really good story. And uh, like, for example, his uh, when his parents uh, divorced, before they divorced, they made a deal uh, who would get what, and they cut Johnny out of the deal. And Johnny was a minor. So they kind of just let John. Mm -hmm. The mother went before the judge and said, oh, my son is perfectly uh, fine. He's self-sufficient. He's emancipated. When the poor bastard was uh, sleeping in the backseat of a car, hmm. eating beans, you know, and they left him by the wayside. So I became empathetic. Mind you, I'm not working for Amber anymore. Uh, emp empathetic to his upbringing. He had a rough childhood. And so I decided to post some of that, you know, on the uh, internet. And I uh, put a few stories in Radar Online. And uh, it was nice stuff. Sure. Of course, the Amber Heard fans didn't like it. <laughs> no, I, they, they rallied. Johnny, Johnny yeah. Depp fans loved it. And there's the line. Everybody draws the line. Everyone sides with one uh, or the other. And here I am yeah. in the middle. So, yeah, it's a thankless job. And, and uh, the unsung hero, I guess. But look, I got paid. I'm not crying. Now, you know what you signed up for. You're a big boy. You know, it'd be really interesting. By the way, in a few seconds, we're going to go through a laundry list of very recognizable names. Right. And we'll, we'll get Paul's reaction on all of them. But let me before we do that, could you imagine if your career, you started a career in 1993 with Michael Jackson. Could you imagine if your career had started like maybe eight years before that or nine? I mean, just think the involvement in the whole OJ situation that you probably would have been involved in, right? I mean, that would have been- Well, that was 94. 94, so, right. 94 so, OJ. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was. No, I know. That's why I'm saying. If it was, if his career had started nine years earlier. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you sense. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, time out. My math's off. So, yeah. Did, were you involved in the OJ thing in at all? Well, on the periphery, but- uh, it all intersected. Didn't remember Cato, where it was like uh, it was Michael Jackson, then Heidi Fleiss, and then OJ, and all of these scandals kind of. And it was the best thing they told Heidi. It, the OJ thing is the best thing that could have happened to her. Right. She's buried news. Uh, yeah. It could have happened to her because it took attention away from from her. The the distraction. But um, yeah, it's uh, the things that go on beneath the red carpet is a lot different than what you see <laughs> right uh, it's list the glamour and on the big screen and that's my turf the sifting through someone put it eloquently sifting through the secrets that smolder beneath right. the red carpet it's the underbelly and it's something and i'm happy to take your audience on this journey it's it's overwhelming um someone said i should write a book i've got tens of thousands of pages of material mm -hmm. to make to write a hundred books right uh you do well i mean you've got the look the personality go ahead I, I was going to say that you know you talked about the heidi fleiss and everybody said uh, uh she had a black book with all the names now we have just Gis uh, maxwell G giselle yeah I, I can't her first name with that black book do you have any info on that Jeffrey yeah, Epstein. Yeah, Jeff, you the F, Jeffrey it. Epstein case with the Giselle there are a lot Maxwell. Of names on that there. book, in, there's a lot of names in that book. One of whom was the uh, head of March of, of Dimes, 
who had a with, a, with the Epstein book, uh, Giselle Maxwell or Heidi Fleiss? Heidi, Heidi's I'm book. Okay. I'm talking about Heidi's book. Okay. And, and some of the who's who. You see, there are a lot of people in Hollywood, and I don't have to tell you this. There's a lot of people in every walk of life that they're respected, revered. They can do no wrong. They're like gods. But behind closed doors, they're bigger scumbags than hmm. this former playgirl model could ever be. But for, for some inexplicable reason, uh, people are blind to that. They can do no wrong. And uh, that's what I... Uh, that's what I have to. Sure. You're in, a, you're in an interesting situation because you can consume the pop culture news and the entertainment news and see what's yeah. out there for the for the masses. Well, meanwhile, you kind of know the backstory and you know what's going on. And you've been doing this for almost 30 years from 93 to now with every big name in between. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. There's a big name. California governor. I know you've got a little history with him. Yeah, I met Arnold. I was uh, assigned to uh, the task of being the, the head of his uh, security team wow. at an event in L.A. Uh, in 1994, and that's how I met him. And uh, both he and Maria, he was married to Maria at the time. Maria Shriver. Also, and a few other uh, people as well, uh, uh, Whoopi Goldberg and a few others. But he was... Uh, very nice and uh, friendly when the cameras were on him, but when the cameras were off him, he had a look of uh, that of uh, another world. He was like in his own world, and it was tough to figure that guy out. He had an insatiable sexual appetite, as do a lot of people in that uh, celebrities, because they have everything at their disposal. They have women falling at their feet, just like Cato does. They're, and, they're uh, off camera right now. You can't yeah. see them. They are at my feet, though. Yeah. That's why we have to shoot at an we elevated shoot level. <laughs> and oh, one second there. That's uh, don't touch the Cato. Fast forward, Arnold Schwarzenegger decides he wants to run for governor in 2001. He needs to know what he's going to be up against. And mm -hmm. so uh, I'm assigned to the job to, of going out to find the dirt on Schwarzenegger, not to hurt him, right. but to help him. See what's Preemptive out. strike, what see what's out there. Yeah, He knows what he has cleaned up and he knows that what might be still dangling out there. And I came back with a 26 page file, great detailed stuff, um, uh, unflattering stuff, which I, I won't get into. But let's just say he decided not to run after he got the fire. No kidding. Yeah. So that what you found was enough to convince Arnold, because this was before the recall election where he actually the, won that, uh, that short thing. So there was probably, you know, he probably, that was the perfect timing because it was yeah. boom, he's right. in a couple months campaigning and then, you know, charm everybody and let, let, the, let yeah. the state vote. He said, only 26 pages, I want more. Yeah, you know, he wanted oh, less in that case. No, you want more. I want more. Hey, dirt. Do, do they ever get pissed <laughs> off at you for finding the stuff on them that they didn't want people to know? No, they know the deal. I mean, they know I'm going to dig deep and I'm going to come up right. with something. You know, even the virgin bride going down the aisle you, has yeah. secrets. Yeah, and I, you're going to find them. You know, yeah, I, I watch a lot of these which uh, forensic. Brings to, which brings me to one of the effective ways of putting out a fire and. To answer your question, how do you make it disappear? Is that when you bring scandal upon someone, you mm -hmm. you barely bring you bring it upon yourself because now people are going to start looking at you with a magnifying glass. Right. And there's an actor named David Boreanaz uh, who did Angel and the TV show Bones. Yep. Yeah. I'm and a, a young extra, beautiful woman, aspiring actress. Uh, she came on to him, and uh, he felt that there was something there. He made the big mistake of being alone with her, uh, and uh, then she accused him of uh, for unwanted touching, which is, which of course, was BS. And who does she hire? Gloria Allred. <laughs> Gloria calls up uh, David's lawyer and says, "I want." A million dollars. Hmm. And the lawyer goes, oh, yeah, really? The lawyer calls me, tells me the circumstances. I find out 
that 10 years prior, she was a stripper in the Midwest. She also did a little pole, uh, pole dancing. And in between, uh, and, and during her break, she would give blowjobs out in the parking lot. And so when we brought that information, I found one of the guys who she Blue. was messing around with. <laughs> huh. And we got him on tape. And when Gloria saw that tape, it was like, oh, shit. So needless to say, the money went from a million dollars down to a, a significant huh. to a happy hour oh, drink, wow. to a happy hour dance. And that's how, <laughs> and that's how I made that one disappear. That's amazing. Yeah, you would have paid her in that's, singles. That's how you do it. In action, be primitive. In foresight, a strategist. I think Cato is very much like that. He, and uh, Paul, that could have cost him his career. Yeah, of course. And so these things, these are career damaging image damaging things uh there's no there are a lot of ways to assassinate one's character but uh, but this scandal this sexual scandal mm -hmm. uh, i think is the worst yeah, I know that. I know that you can find out. I, I I read a lot and I watch a lot of forensic files. I don't know if you ever did any dumpster diving, but you can find out everything in someone's oh, garbage yeah. can. I can. Get a whole profile on somebody dumpster diving. Oh yeah, you just get, you see what they eat, what they do, what they're what they're looking at on the internet. Anything can be done in that. So you've obviously you've done some of that. Oh, that's oh, absolutely. I'm the master of it. <laughs> get the whole profile. I can find out if you're having an affair. I can find out, uh, you know. Everything about you, where you sure, where you, you know, now, I mean, a lot, I, well, not everybody shreds their garbage, right? No, 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 they think, that, especially people that are isolated or insulated, they think they can get away with stuff mm -hmm. because they do. So, they maybe get a little sloppy. Can you access phone records? Are you able to do things like that? Some of those things, uh, the short answer is, uh, probably okay, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, I'll tell you something, you have to be creative. Um, call me a fixer, cleanup man, investigator, attorney's investigator. You have to be creative because there's no a special way to, or common way to fix everybody. Exactly. Problem. No one size fits all. Ta mm -hmm. Taylor, Taylor designed the method on how you're going to put out that fire. There's an actor named Brendan Frazier who uh, got screwed out of a couple of million dollars. And uh, by, by how how did he get screwed out of a couple million? Because he's from in, okay, because he did producer. Encino Man and yeah, he was. Oh, he's a big time actor. Oh, yeah, he was. He was yeah. yeah, and he kind of just disappeared. And so he, uh, I was hired to serve this flaky guy's uh, uh, subpoena, mm -hmm. and no one could get him. They said we'll have to call Baresi. Well, you know, there's a there's a gate. There's a private property um he can see people around him when he drives in and out it, and and uh, the attorney said don't worry paul paul will get it. well i got onto the property and uh he parks his car right in the carport so i got up in the tree that <laughs> over overhangs his carport and when he came he drove in i jumped down from the tree and handed him the. <laughs> I thought you were going to say. So you're on his property. And this little kid thought I was something like an action hero. And she goes, "Hi, wow, how did you do that?" <laughs> and he he says he says, "Don't talk to that man. He's not Daddy's friend." You've been served. <laughs> You've been served. Wow, that's. I thought you were going to say you took his picture or something, but yeah. no. Boom, you got him, and and you, and you process the papers. The, there Spider Man. There are many circumstances like that. And, um, well, Paul, let me ask you this. You're in the middle of creative. You got to be creative. And you look like you could be creative. Maybe roll up those shirt sleeves a little bit too. You can show a little more creativity, get their attention if you have to that way. Have you been in a situation where you're digging for dirt on an A list celebrity who's involved in some saint, uh, crazy sex scandal? They find out and they try to pay you to get off the case or to get off their trail. Has that ever happened? Um, you mean like come on to our side, or or just pay you to stop looking at them? Yeah, once, but I won't tell you who it is or what the circumstances was. But no, I oh. I, didn't, I didn't give in. But I will tell you something about a crazy sex scandal. Eddie Murphy uh, had uh, he was picked up in West Hollywood uh, 
he says he was going to give the young lady a ride. It was a transsexual hooker. And uh, he alleges he was just there to be a good Samaritan and give her a lift. But uh, anyway, when that all went down, uh, every transsexual in the neighborhood alleged they had sexual relations with Eddie Murphy. And so who do they call to put that fire out? Paul Baresi. Well, how are you going to do it? We've had investigators on this for a month. And we can't even find them. I said, I can find every one of them. Don't worry about it. So I went to uh, the matriarch of all the transvestites. Her name is Candace. I said, Candace, you have a golden opportunity here. I said, if you could help me, help me help these other <laughs> women see their way clear to saying that it was not Eddie Murphy with whom uh, they had sex, but this person. And I held up a, a eight by ten black and white photo of a spitting image of Eddie Murphy. The guy's name is Donald uh, Donald Trip. I almost, I almost said Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trip. She goes, my God, he's a spitting image of Eddie Murphy. I said, that's what I said. She said, well, what's in it for me? I said, look, I'm not going to pay you off. I said, I'll pay you for your time. She says. Uh, I want $50,000. I said, I can't give you $50,000. So anyway, long story short, we got it down to 10 grand. Hmm. She helped me round them all up and uh, signed. They all signed declarations saying that it was not uh, Eddie Murphy, but Donald Tripp. And that problem wow. went away. Mind you, I'm giving you guys the short of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Poor but, Donald Trump. Hey, wait, is there a real Donald Trump or was this a fictional person? One of, one of the women who I went to see, um, she didn't have her makeup on and she insisted I interview her in the kitchen with the only light was a little light uh, on the ceiling. And uh, I interviewed her like practically in the dark. And she had her sugar daddy over there and uh he was smoking a cigar and like keeping an eye out on i guess on her iceberg you know. slim and uh he was like moving around and shuffling around i said hey i said why don't you come over and join us he said i don't need to come over and join you and then he flashed a weapon right here he he lift up his shirt he's got a clock in his uh his belt i said he says i got my he says, I got my shit over here. I said, good, I got my shit too. So I lifted up my pants leg and showed him my little pistole. And it's interesting because often you have to fight fire with fire. It's good to be charming. It's good to have a develop a good rapport, try to find some common ground with people to make problems go away. But every so often things like that will happen and you have to be ready for them. And you got to keep cool under that kind of pressure. You got to stay cool. Is there a real Donald Trip? Yeah, I'm Googling say, him right now. Is there a Donald Trip? Donald Trip is his name. Don a, I'm, I'm looking for him. Did you have to tell Donald, hey, we're going to use you as the, the alibi here? Or is there any ramifications for. Oh, that's one little minor detail I forgot to tell you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He had been dead for seven years. Okay. Oh, okay. And got you. Okay. It's a, and Eddie Murphy at the time was going, why couldn't Uber have been invented back then? I never would have picked up that tranny. If allegedly, allegedly, Donald Tripp. But see, in the, back then, the attorney would say, uh, would never ask, um, uh, how did you do that? How did you make that happen? Because then the investigator would say, you don't want to know. Nowadays, uh, they ask, and I still say, you don't. You don't want to know. No, that's got to be your but answer. You, but you got to be, you got to be careful um, these days. Yeah. To be honest, maybe twenty years ago, if someone needed a good beating or a little <laughs> working over, that that happened. I'm being honest with you. Um, but these days. You need, you don't need some guy who's going to swing a bat and beat the crap out of someone. You need someone who's smooth and someone who can put a sentence together and someone who can be persuaded. persuaded. Yeah. Well, and that's where I come in. 
Has there ever been a, a lead you had to follow that you're even to yourself, you're going, this is just a little bit too bizarre, even for me. Uh, any, any kind of thing that ever happened to you were like, no, I'm going to stay out of this one. And, and did you ever have to travel out of the country and uh, the most bizarre situation you've been in? Yeah, there was, there's a, uh, uh, and by the way, people who hire people to, to want to beat the crap out of, or, mm -hmm. or put in the hospital, a lot of these people are very well respected, established people. But they have such disdain for the for their enemy uh, that they're willing to to do that to take that risk. And uh, there was a lawyer, a very important lawyer, who obviously has to remain nameless. He came to me and he said, uh, "I want you to take a sledgehammer." And I said, "Holy shit, here it come!" But no, I don't want you to beat beat the guy with it. I want you to just destroy his car with a sledgehammer. And that was very bizarre to me. I said, no, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm good on committing a felony for you, sir. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll pass on the jail time, but thank you. The, tar the target was, uh, uh, he's dead now, so I can tell you his name, a producer by the name of Arnold Copelson. Yeah, huge. And, and this guy, hated, he hated Copelson so bad that... He um, he wanted to do something. Yeah, that was extremely yeah. personal. Something had to happen there. That... Really vindictive. Yeah. yeah. That... Are you, do you ever use the line? Uh, to me, you're, you're the modern day Brian Mills, Liam Neeson, and Taken. Is that one of your favorite things when you say, "I have a few particular skills. I can't pay you." But... That's good. You know, sometimes I I look at movies. I will when tell I you. Boy, I, I will would... tell you. <laughs> When I was a little boy, I loved the movies. It, it, it was a great escape from a, a, you know, really tough upbringing. It was that a lot of actors who become uh, people who become actors love the movies when they're children. They want to be. And I looked up on the screen. I always saw myself as as the hero and the leading man and all of that stuff. And um, sometimes I see movies now and I think, wait a minute, was this ripped right out of the Paul Baresi? Huh playbook you know the first episode we were talking about eddie murphy the fir first episode of ray donovan you'll recall was about a, a movie star who had a yen for transsexual women and uh i thought to myself yeah this sounds very wow. familiar. Well, and, and you know what they have to get and, the inspiration from of somewhere course, i think so you know too. And, I, and that was the first season of ray donovan was good that was a good show. I called them. I called the producers on that. I said, you know, this is ripped right out of my my playbook. Can I get, get some kind of credit for that? You know, like maybe a walk on or something. <laughs> it's like, nah. I would, See, you got you got to be careful though, Paul, because you know that's a good. That was a good. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What no, you got to be careful just because. Then they're going to want to know all your secrets. Then they're going to want you know break out your notes. What yeah. other stories can we get from you? And I also think any celebrity that you've worked for before, they kind of look at you and go. This guy should be in a movie. I, it's got to have happened to you before. I, I don't know. You know, it's, I'm glad you asked that question, <laughs> Cato, because let's bring it up to right now. Um, it's, after I finished working for Amber and I did these great stories, like I was saying, for mm -hmm. Johnny, Adam Wallman calls and he says, Johnny really appreciates what you're doing. He reads everything. And like he says, he, Johnny told me he thinks that when this is all said and done, you're going to be his hero. I said, Johnny really said that. I'm going to be his hero. So, well, after the trial, I haven't heard from those guys since. So. Well, he's, he's busy, but I bet you something like that. He, he seems like the kind I'm of guy. Hero. Yeah. He does. He seems like the and, kind of guy that would say, uh, get, get Paul for this. Yeah. And, and plus, he, oh, he he'll knows. call on me again, Cato. I, 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 I bet you he will. But well, it's not going to be to invite me to the island or hang out. No. or ask like Johnny's probably saying, me. I can't believe Paul couldn't find this dirt on me. If he had looked here, no, I'm just <laughs> kidding. Because if there was out there, you would have found it. Okay, I'm going to throw another kind of oddball celebrity out there that was big back in the day that I think both of you might have a little bit of commentary on. Uh, do, do the words Steven Seagal mean anything to the two of you? Oh, yeah, that rings a bell. Yeah, I'll let Paul go on this one I, because uh, I – and by the way, I love the uh, – his uh, above the law uh, was I. I loved the film yeah, well, when I first saw, but I, I was that, like, that was like uh, Julia, Julius Nasso who discovered him. Yeah. Film that was his first film, and it was a great film. Julius Nasso hired me 
uh, to go after Seagal because Seagal uh, screwed Nassau out of a contract, out of a three picture deal. So I had to get the dirt on him. I mean, it, it, there's a lot of moving parts here, but uh, I found a lot of really bad stuff about Seagal, his womanizing, uh, his opinion of uh, women who, when he comes on to them, if they don't acquiesce to his overtures of sexual advances, then they're whores, they're sluts, you know, they're this, they're that. He's one of those guys that if you if you get rejected, he can't handle it. That kind of thing. Well, because he got thrust you, into fame. That's yeah, part of it. You and, know, it's not like he's a trained actor. You know, he was a he was a what a karate I, instructor, a, a martial from, arts expert. Michael Ovitz. I yeah, mean, the, the backstory is Michael Ovitz, the founder of CAA. He yeah. was his trainer, and then Michael liked him and started putting him into movies. At least that's part of the Hollywood. Well, I think it was above the law yeah. though that made, and that made him. And that, by the way, I that made him a right from that one film a superstar but you're talking about with the with the women if he you know he was had this ego he couldn't take rejection did yeah. you find that out from interviews did because you're investigating him so you obviously oh, had yes. to... well i found it, he did an interview for gallery magazine in 1988 and the uh the person who interviewed him his name is bob ellis who i had breakfast with every so often i was telling him about he said oh, i interviewed steven Seagal. he's a He's a real this and that and the other. I said, wow, uh, did you did you tape record the interview? Said, I'd love to hear it. He said, yeah, I got the, I got the tape recording. And on that tape, uh, Steven Seagal was talking about a female reporter from London who acted like she was coming on to him. Of course, she rejected him. And she was every kind of slut or bitch in the world, which... So he he had that. You heard it all on tape. It was right there. Yeah. He built a reputation for himself. And that's what made him the number one suspect when Anita Bush, uh, that name probably won't be familiar, but Anita Bush is the LA Times reporter who Anthony Pelicano, my boss, uh, put together a crew to threaten her, uh, allegedly blow up her car, put a fish on her door, but Steven Seagal was the first uh, number one suspect for hiring Pelicano to do that, all because of his past hmm. reputation. That's why you got to be, wow. you got to conduct yourself, uh, you know, in a way that's not going to come back and haunt you. And that's what happened with Steven Seagal. I remember an article that came out in the 90s, an article, I, I don't know what tabloid it was, but it said that I had uh, a date and an affair with Kelly LeBrock. Now, Kelly LeBrock at that time was smoking hot, and she was the woman in red, uh, Gene Wilder film, and uh, just the, the drop dead gorgeous. I think they married. Uh, yeah, they were married. And it said, uh -huh. it said that. And then, yeah, yeah, that's his and, first wife. I yeah, his first wife. And, and by the way, maybe I saw her at an event, but no, I've never... So the National Enquirer, or, or, uh, a tabloid said that you were so, having an affair with Kelly LeBron. Yeah, we, had, we, were, we dated or were dating and all that. And I, right, I go, Jesus, this is kind of hilarious. And and I go, I love Steven Seagal and all that. And then one time I saw him, uh, yeah. uh, uh, who I was seeing at the time, her father was at the uh, in the hospital at UCLA. He walked out the same time we're at, in the hospital, right in the lobby at UCLA Medical. And I thought he was going to kill me. He looked at me and I was like, <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that's and all that, it was. So, and that was that was the look though, but it was a look like the article. And I was going to say that you know, are you looking at me because of that? But you know, you don't I can't say anything. It's like because I don't know if he's thinking that I'm going, so do you think that was true? That, by the way, that was no, that's not true. Now the Cato I know would have said, Hey, say hi to Kelly for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give, her, give her a kiss for me. <laughs> hey Paul, let me ask you this. Um, how shocked would the public be if they really knew? some of the sexual scandals that have happened in Hollywood, either in the past or now. On a scale of one to 10, if people had a true idea of kind of the crazy stuff that goes on, where would it well, be? Way above 10. It would be, it would shock people to hear uh, the truth. Wow. On one hand, people will criticize me and say, why is this guy 
talking about these guys. Well, a lot of the a lot of these things ended up being publicized and reported on. But uh, I think um, uh, I would say beyond ten. Mm -hmm. uh, wow! Everybody's got skeletons in the closet, and people don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear about their beloved star being in that way. I do. I, me, I, always, I find it interesting. I, 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 you know, I also think of things like uh, that people are that are beloved, that, that people just won't believe anything of their stars. They won't and, that. Believe and, it anyway. and anyways, and it's like, I, I, I really think uh, like, uh, I always wonder why the uh, split up ever happened between Tom uh, Cruise and Nicole Kidman. I thought that was a marriage that was going to last. Do you have any involvement with Tom Cruise, Nicole Kidman? Oh, yeah. Well, Tom Cruise, he was haunted with these uh, uh, rumors for years that he was gay. And there was one, there was a lawsuit that uh, he filed for a young man who, who alleged he, that he won. And then another guy came out Jeez. and named Nathan Hamilton, who alleged he had sexual relations with Bruce. And I was hired to find that guy, bring him to Anthony Pelicano's office so Anthony could interrogate him and i i used the ruse to get him there which is really not important how i got him there let's just say i got him there and um and from there uh pelicano contacted some people and uh, the cease and desist letters were written and then i suggested to the young man he get out of town for a while till things cooled off and uh and that was just before Pelicano got arrested. Wow. And I had $60,000 forthcoming. <laughs> Tony got arrested. He never got that 60 grand. Wow. I understand Tom Cruise has a walkout closet. I'm kidding. I love Tom Cruise. I well, love I Tom I'm kidding. Field. I've called Burr Fields who passed oh, away. Oh, yeah. Burr just passed away like a week ago or so. Earlier right? this month. I, yeah. said, Burr. I said, you know, I had this money coming. He said, well, how much were you promised? And he said, no. He said, I, I don't know anything about that. He said, Pelicano must have made that deal on your own. I said, look, you wrote a cease, uh, cease and desist letter. I said, what would you hire an investigator to uh, make that, uh, bring you yeah. to the position to write a cease and desist letter? He said, I don't know. He said, how about five grand? So he sent me a little token five grand so i got the check called him up i said thanks bert now i know what a tip feels like <laughs> oh, wow. yeah there's no hr department for you to you know make a complaint with when you're a hollywood fixer yeah. did you go to his funeral oh. say it again did you go to his funeral were you invited a, a guest of no the no no i didn't, didn't even look i'm not I, like i said i'm the first guy they'll call when they're in a bind yeah and then they forget uh, about you. Then they forget, he, yeah. And a, a big star like Gerard Butler, who, who who's oh. made the mistake of dealing with these flakes, uh, these mafioso guys, uh, Russian slash Armenian mafioso producers, and who screwed them out of a lot of money. And nobody wanted to go up on the hill in Glendale to this guy's sprawling <laughs> property uh, uh, to serve the guy because they thought they would get, you know, get killed. Wow. And I said, uh, so I got a call and they said, would you be willing to do it? I said, yeah, give me the documents. I'll, I'll, I'll serve. Them. And, and so they're so naive, a lot of these uh, celebrities, because they're so used to having their asses wiped by everyone yeah. and getting everything, people just fawning all over them that they lose touch with reality. So, I have to go in, uh, into the real world uh, and and fix the problem. Yeah, you know, I miss I old Hollywood. I didn't know Armenians lived in Glendale. Now you do. Uh, oh, yeah. I, was I, know, I know. I was kidding. I know. I was, I was, no. Inside Hollywood, LA That's joke. LA, LA yeah. joke. You know, I, I tell you what, man, Hollywood has changed so much. I guess my question is, is there a need as much for someone like you right now, if you were younger in the game, uh, it seems like the biggest need for somebody in Hollywood is getting a situation fixed where they've been canceled, not where a sexual uh, scandal or some other sort of scandal you need to make disappear. But is there still a high uh, demand? I haven't, I haven't I haven't been involved in any this person's canceled. And so I need you to 
I mean, usually it's their reputation is on the line. Right. I guess that'll always happen, right? Yeah, the Me Too movement happened, and, and now we but, have... But I do only... want to say this to your audience. That, that I know this. a lot of the things I'm saying, I'm just, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, it's stranger than fiction. Oh, this guy, Donald Tripp, Donald Trump. No, his name was Donald Tripp. Oh, he got up in a tree. Yes, I got up in a tree. I mean, everything I tell you people, you can take to the bank. And I can back it up if I have to. So oh. when you go on, you do your little comments. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I no. believe you, Paul. Yeah. No, I, yeah, you're, you're, uh, you I mean, are. People tend to prefer more uh, rather to uh, criticize. It's always easier to criticize than to be correct. And that's one of the things like on Twitter, I call it <laughs> Twitter wars, you know, why not just recognize someone for their best achievements in life than to than to uh, crucify them for, for whatever doubt you might have or all your conspiracy theories or whatever. You should just give credit where credit's due. I agree. I, I, I think you'll have fans on our show. I, I think I don't think anybody, anybody would ever be negative. I think you 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 spoke the, the truth, and I think people will actually fall in love with you. No, yeah, but you're, you're entertaining. All the time. I'm, I'm always thinking more, not so much about me. The thought in my mind was Amber Heard. You know, she's taking a horrible beating. Okay, she screwed up. You know, uh, if people want to see her burned at the stake. Like, uh, you know, yeah. it's just ridiculous yeah that like, thing uh what? that went south for her big time do you think do you uh how do you get paid from her do you think that's gonna happen <laughs> what do you have to do she, i've been paid oh you have okay yeah, All right. she owes 10 million to death yeah the point is i don't like and i never have and i still don't i probably will till the day i die i don't like to see anyone kicked when they're down mm -hmm. i don't i don't do it and i don't like to see people do it well, I think some bizarre person, maybe some chic or something, will pay her ten million just to shit in his bed. Could happen. I can say that, can't I? I think so. I just did. Yeah. I, you never know. Hey, Paul, it could happen. There's crazy people, Paul. Am I right? Someone would pay for a fetish. Bag. Ah, forget the plastic bag. We lost our lease. We're selling our mattresses. Everything must go. Hey, Paul, was it was it a lucrative business? Did it go in ebbs and flows where you're super busy for four or five months and, and maybe nothing to do on that? And I know you had other projects and you did other work, but did this keep you busy over the past 30 years? Yeah, if I can get about two or three high profile cases a year on the average, it's uh, it's pretty lucrative. Uh, you know, they, even though I only worked for Amber for for three months, that's a pretty good that's a pretty good stretch. And um he, so it, it, these, uh, I was able to become who I, who I eventually became because of my life, the way I was brought up. And so I had a real rocky upbringing, like I said, and um, I got to see early on what really went on in Hollywood behind closed doors. Rock Hudson was my idol. And I remember going to see Pillow Talk with Doris Day and Brock Hudson uh, with my mother. I think I was eight or nine years old. And then I finally had the opportunity to, to meet Brock Hudson. And he was a, a mean, spirited, irascible natured drunk. He, he had a couple of drinks already. He says, I saw your pictures in, in Playgirl. He said, uh, mine's bigger. I'll bet you five hundred dollars. Mine's bigger. And here's a guy I idolize, and he's talking about the size of his penis. You know, it just put me off. <laughs> Welcome to Hollywood. And, and How that, weird. And that was a rude awakening. Yeah. To me, yeah. that that moment, that was the defining moment where I realized people, what you see on the big screen, are nothing at all what they are in real life. And that had a, that played a, awakening. That this had to play a big part. role in shaping it, you too, just because. He was one of your idols, right? I mean, yeah. if he, if he had been cool to you and taken you under his wing, I mean, you may have done it. Seventy-nine, when I still aspired yeah. to to be an actor, and Cato, you know what what world that is? It's yeah. a ruthless, hateful world. Well, yeah, and, the, uh, people want to uh, they want something from you, uh, in in the hopes that you, they want sex or something, whatever they can get from you. 
when when they they steal your dreams by making promises that they have no intention of fulfilling, like that like that uh, Weinstein Weinstein, you Harvey. know, he walked around promising parts to women, but it was just uh, his own way of it, that's getting the, them in bed. The the bigger mine's bigger than yours. That's an old Milton, Milton Berle thing of Milton Berle is the bigger that. But you do that. The joke is you're you're fighting back and forth. Mine's bigger than yours. No, mine's bigger. And then you take off your belts and measure them. I don't know if you know that old joke, Tom. <laughs> that's, that, an old, that's an I, old joke. Hey, I have a, a real quick two part question because I know you got to go. Uh, mine is first two parter. First, how do you how do you actually trust an in, an informant, and how did law enforcement treat you? Because obviously they're part of the case too. So that's two parter. I, I really that's an interesting question well, for me. I found a lot of collateral evidence when I was investigating Johnny on his ex business partner, who Anthony Fox, who mysteriously disappeared hmm. uh, in two thousand one. He just disappeared at the time. He was having going through a court battle with Johnny Depp, and then there were rumors abound that Johnny, his biker friends, took him out in the desert and. You know, mm. did him in and all that stuff, and so I, uh, I actually uncovered uh, important clues because Fox still remains on the endangered, missing persons list, wow. and uh, after twenty years, detectives with the Ventura Police Department were no closer to finding him. But the clues I found, uh, I turned over to the detectives, and that that reinvigorated interest. This is in the, for another episode. Yeah. That reinvigor uh, reinvigorated interest uh, to look for him and to follow up on these uh, these clues that I found they're, they're pretty fascinating. Yeah. They suggest that uh, his disappearance was nothing what we thought. It, it suggests that his disappearance was a a cover up. Wow. That's, All that's right. Okay, and 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 last thing was trusting informants. It gets you kind of look them in the eye, and you just go, uh, "Don't screw with me." Yeah, I don't, when you say inform, yeah. I, 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 I guess. guess tabloid people or whatever. I mean, you never know who, everything's really about money. No, I, I, I dig in, I find stuff on my own. Yeah. And, um, uh, I just know where to go, you know, like the old adage, he knows where all the bodies are buried. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like breathing in and out. Uh, 30 years I've been at, the, at this. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Just any industry anybody's in, you know, the the, the inner workings and just the the, the, the uh, shortcuts, the back doors and the, everything that you need. Everybody should probably rent a movie called L.A. Confidential. It's a, it's a lot. It's it's very much true to this uh, Well, it's a great movie. Um, working on anything now? You want to tease any projects? No, I am working on something now. It's a, it's a huge case, but I can't. Devolve okay. Away. No well, hints. No hints. Okay. We'll have you on speed dial when you can. By the way, is it going to be something that's going to get our attention when the story breaks? Are we going to go, ooh? It's something that's center right now uh, in in the media and in the news. So. Wow. I can't wait There's for that to break. something, but we'll come, right. come to our I show first. I don't want to tease your audience up too much well call me and cato when you're ready to talk about it because we'd love to have you on again great to have you on thanks a lot and by the way you look maybe 40. oh what a guy paul you do oh, look yeah, good man hair, I, I get back in the movie <laughs> everybody uh if you're just listening to this check this out on youtube too because uh, paul's a compelling figure and uh man that was great that was a a, a great visit into kind of the inner workings of Hollywood and what goes on behind the scenes that you don't know about when you're watching Extra yeah. and Access Hollywood and you're going to the movie premieres and, and the cinema. But that's what makes this city tick. It's right outside our door. I mean, literally, we tape this in the heart of Hollywood. Right. The Hollywood Hills are, you know, just down the street too, and that's where all the action is. We walk out the door from this studio, we are in Scandalville. Yeah, it's right there. Paul, best of luck, man, with what you're working on right now. Thanks for your time, and we will definitely speak to you again, okay? The Fixer. Thank you, Paul. Paul, you're the best. Looking Paul Baresi. Go Rogan. <laughs> Look at those bucks. He's, got, he's, got, Come on. he's leaving us with Joe muscles. Rogan, you got nothing over on me. I want your menu plan I'll next be, time you're on. I'll All right. be back. Looking good, man. We'll be in touch. All natural, no steroids. All right. That's the way to go. Well, I, you know what? I'll dig through your garbage and find out. I'll get back to you. <laughs> yeah. I'll see if you're lying. Yeah. There you go. Tom and I are dumpster diving <laughs> after the show. Thank you, Paul. I love it. Thanks, Paul. Great show. Great show. Yeah. I know. That was fantastic. Look, I can't wait to hear what he's... What, 
I, I hope he can tell us later on what T is working on. That's sort of like now I'm on the edge of my seat going, what's in the news right now? I got to I got to know you just scroll through some stories. Yeah, and you probably like, narrow. Oh, I, you probably we, it's, it's celebrity related. I'm we sure. can narrow it down. I'm sure, you know, the, the, the only way something like this works is when someone is a um, has the charisma and yeah. can be a storyteller, which he is, and then is not afraid to just say what happened. Yeah. You know, so many people just dance around it and they don't, well, you know, if I really could have told you, but that's what makes an interview like that so good. So tell your friends uh, that, you, that, that this is a great episode. Share it. Uh, make sure you download and subscribe. Check us out on YouTube, like I said at the beginning of the show. Man, we had a great, great traffic for our Anne Hayes story. Um, we'll, next time he's on the show, we'll ask if he knows Anne Hayes too. We'll get him back, though. We, we know that. And uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're uh, this one degree of scandalous has taken off, and there's just every day something going on. Yep. So, what do you got going this week? No well, gambling. Was, no gambling. No, you know, well, no. I, I know, we'll see. I, I've I've got to. Uh, I'm taking a trip somewhere. I don't know, but uh, we'll we'll figure out when we're going to tape our next episode. We'll co we'll decide if it's going to be a Saturday or whatever. Yeah. But hey, by the way, the of... Milwaukee Brewers are in town. <laughs> you can go. You can go scream at them in person. You don't have to do it on Twitter. Yelich is right there in the outfield. Well, Craig Council's in the dugout. Why don't you go let them have it? It's funny you said that. I was offered tickets to go to the game yesterday. I'm sure I can get the tickets today. And then I got a. Um, a text from the game, which is the biggest sports yeah. show in Milwaukee. They said, please come on the show and talk about dissing on the Brewers. And uh, I said, I have tickets to that. I said, season's over. And they said, please discuss this with us. And it's the uh, number one sports show in Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah. And I do their show a lot. So, uh, and by the way, the entire station listens to uh, one degree of scandalous. Oh, so that's awesome. We are that's awesome. Go on there and plug the show. By the way, Cato said last week, uh, when Darren Ravel, the number one tweeter in the world, was on our show, that Darren is, or that Cato is nice Cato on Instagram yep. and nasty Cato on Twitter. And then I, I watched you this week destroy the Brewers. <laughs> oh, you did I, I, mean, I, I could not believe how hard you were on them. I am, if, I am so hard on you. If these, you showed I, up at the game at Dodger Stadium, because the Brewers are in town right now as we're taping this, they're here tonight. They, 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 they oh, no, no. What do you I've think done, they'd say? Well, you got to understand, I've been doing this for years. I, I, in my lifetime, I want to see a World Series. Yeah, and I, I don't. I feel like I'll, it'll never happen. It's a small market, so I've been doing this forever. I became friends with a lot of the guys from the the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel that writes the mm -hmm. articles. I've gone. I've been a guest at games. I, I'm sure I'll never be able to throw out the first pitch. The team knows me. I've been there. I was at a game uh, three years ago where I won the 50-50. Uh, 24,000 and the pick just by chance. It took my buddy. We won that. And it, within a matter of 30 seconds, it was on 10,000 different wires, made the cover of people of me, the, uh, of me holding the check. Uh, all this is up. You can, you can go on Twitter and find this out. You can go on any, just uh, Google Cato, uh, 50, 50 draw on Milwaukee Brewers. I love baseball. I was wanted to be a pro ball player. I, I, I pitched, and it, so when I see stupid mistakes, like Yelich <laughs> dropping a pop-up, scoring the winning run against the, the You're Cubs. merciless. You're oh, yeah. merciless. Hey, it, by it, the way, when you won that big raffle, did you take Kelly LeBrock out for dinner? I did. did nice, yeah. And Steve, nice. Steven Seagal is our waiter. So it was... Oh, some, he's working again. That, 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 I'm yeah, glad. I'm yeah. glad he's coming We had back. some dim sum. It was delicious. Uh, <laughs> and then he beat my ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is payback for 30 years ago. Uh, okay, great show. Thanks for watching, everybody. Cato. Great I'll seeing see you, my man. Kelly, thanks for watching. <laughs> All right. Uh, we will catch you next week, every Wednesday, brand new episode of One Degree of Scandalous with Cato Cato and Tom Zenner. Have a great week.